All right, before I start this video, I just want to like preface by saying there are a lot of videos out about this particular nostalgia critic review, and mine is by no means like the smartest and most in-depth review, really like picking apart the intellectual points of why it's bad. I'm just kind of like emotionally reacting to this, especially being a fan of Pink Floyd. So that's kind of what you're getting with me with this video. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the actual review. Doug Walker's Nostalgia Critic is like the YouTube companion piece to the Angry Video Game Nerd. Both started around the same time, and if you watched one, you probably have some experience with the other. Both characters exploded in popularity, and their various collaborations helped to galvanize both fan bases. So why am I just now getting around to mentioning Doug Walker? Hell, I've probably made about... 20 videos about James Rolfe at this point, so why not Nostalgia Critic? Well, as I've tried to explain in my comment sections many, many times, I've actually made two videos on the Nostalgia Critic about five years ago when the whole hashtag change the channel controversy was going on. Man, I can't believe that shit was already five years ago, holy shit. Anyway, obviously in those videos, I mainly discussed the controversies surrounding Channel Awesome at that time. I never actually discussed Doug's content. Well, today I am. Stick around as I offer up my thoughts on one of the worst movie reviews of all time. Nostalgia Critic takes on Pink Floyd's The Wall and leaves a permanent bruise on his reputation. This is Dancing with Ghosts. Doug Walker is an online movie critic who started out reviewing movies in front of a beige wall and would insert little skits and cartoonish humor whenever possible to give the reviews a comedic spin. This was the main gimmick that gained Walker thousands of loyal viewers over time. And, and I'll admit, I've seen some of his videos and chuckled here and there, but... Honestly, I'm not that passionate about movies, so I never really watched the channel all that religiously. Nostalgia Critic never inspired me to go out and create my own YouTube channel in the way that, say, James Rolfe did. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I never really cared enough about Nostalgia Critic to make a video on him because he was just so inoffensively bland. He was over there doing his little, you know, low-budget theater vibe and... Heck, every now and then I'd even check in and see, you know, what's, what's the old critic up to these days? But it was on September 18th, 2019 that uh, this popped up. Now I was like, what, what, is it? <laughs> what is this? No, no, dude, just d don't go there, man. Don't fuck me. Pink Floyd is a beloved band that has stood the test of time. The Wall is a beloved album that has stood the test of time. And honestly, for the most part... I think the movie is a damn good film that is still being enjoyed today. Pink Floyd's The Wall was a trippy blend of animation and live action blended together in interesting and unique ways. The film is essentially an autobiography of bassist and co-lead vocalist Roger Waters. Waters' father died in World War II and he grew up a lonely boy who eventually became a rock star who became more isolated and resentful as the band's fame broadened. The movie portrays a more exaggerated and artful take on these events with Waters being portrayed by a character named Pink. All of the traumatic events that happened in the life of Pink caused emotional walls to be built up turning him into an uncaring demagogue who eventually has to come to terms with his inner demons. That is a brief and incomplete synopsis, but it's pretty much all you need to know if you haven't seen the movie. The soundtrack to The Wall was really the thing that rocketed Pink Floyd into yet another stratosphere of rock stardom with their multi-platinum selling The Wall double album. This album came out way before the movie in 1979, three years before the movie would debut. Instead of the traditional formula of a soundtrack orbiting a movie, in this case, the movie was definitely orbiting the album. Radio staples such as Another Brick in the Wall Part 2 and Comfortably Numb were already well entrenched into the cultural zeitgeist by the time the movie came out. This is one of the only double albums that I can honestly say is perfect. There is not a single song I would leave off. In fact, I wish they had included more. There was a song in the movie that wasn't featured on the album called When the Tigers Broke Free. It wasn't until Pink Floyd's 1983 album, The Final Cut, that When the Tigers fro Broke Free finally had a home. Also, if you're a Pink Floyd fan, please do not sleep on The Final Cut. It's so fucking good. And Not Now, John is a hidden gem banger. Now let's flash forward to 2019. 
I click on this video and I proceed to watch one of the worst, low budget, disrespectful, not funny, not well shot, tasteless, clueless, soulless, heartless, senseless, needless, god awful, piece of shit, poor excuse for a parody video that I've ever seen. Hands down. But seriously, uh, it, was, it, it, was, it was pretty bad. And then, if the video wasn't enough, Doug Walker had spent so much time in care in dunking on this film that he even commissioned a music YouTuber named Rob Scallon to recreate 14 of the tracks from the wall so Doug could sing his little parodies over the top of it. Doug was so impressed by this feat that, to this day, his version of The Wall is available for digital download all over the internet, including Amazon and Spotify. Wow. So, what does this album sound like? Not good. It's not good. Yes, yes, I agree with Mr. Fantano, but this is my take on why this album is kind of an abomination. And I say kind of because Rob Scallon, overall, does a pretty faithful interpretation of these songs. However, this was a project that was made on a computer very quickly. And boy, does it show. First, I will explain to you what a DAW is. A DAW is short for a digital audio workstation. This is the industry standard these days for any studio of any kind. You kind of have to go out of your way and spend considerable time and effort to find a studio that is still all analog these days. Unless you're Jack White. Technology has made recording in the studio cheaper, easier, faster, and more efficient. The mother brain of any modern studio is going to be some kind of DAW, such as Pro Tools, Logic, or in my case, FL Studio. These DAWs are incredible pieces of technology, but there is a downside to all this technology. It made people fucking lazy. You can download all form of virtual instrument and sound effects that one brain can dream of. Unfortunately, if you don't know what you're doing, oftentimes these simulated virtual instruments come off as cheesy and inauthentic. The EQs and compressors that you use for mixing and mastering come off as too bright and synthetic. And the microphones you use to capture vocals come off as subpar and amateur. With all that being said, the nostalgia critics The Wall was definitely made on a DAW. And I also believe the only real instrument featured on this album was... A guitar. For instance, listen to these awful Casio keyboard organ samples for In the Flesh. Listen to how the symbols don't choke in the Happiest Days of Our Lives segment of the Wall album. You see, a cymbal choke, by the way, is when you strike the cymbal and then grab it instantly after with your other hand, muting or choking the ring out. The most popular example of this technique would be the beginning of the song Eye of the Tiger. In the Nostalgia Critic version, the cymbals don't choke. Why would that be? Because most electronic drum programs can't do that. There is a way you can achieve a synthetic cymbal choke technique, but you have to really know what you're doing. This was an album that was clearly made on a computer, but when I heard these lack of cymbal chokes on what Doug calls the song after this one is really good, that's when I knew with 100% certainty that, yes, this is a Pro Tools or Garage Band record. Then there's just the cold, dry production of most of the instrumentals. First of all, there is no denying that Pink Floyd's The Wall was made in an old school recording studio using all analog equipment and real musicians playing real instruments. The record has an undeniable atmosphere and warmth. The nostalgia critic facsimile, on the other hand, feels cold and clinical. That is an unfortunate side effect of making everything on a computer and not knowing how to compensate for that lack of warmth. 
There are great records made on computers all the time, but you really have to know how to tease out all of that cold, dry production and add in the warmth and atmosphere of analog. By the time we get to Comfortably Numb, which Nostalgia Critic titled Comfortably Dumb, I get to hear one of my favorite guitar solos of all time, Butchered Beyond Redemption. The guitarist is soloing in the same key, so it doesn't sound out of place, but he's not hitting any of the marks that Dave Gilmore did in the original. Probably because he's no Dave Gilmore. Nevertheless, that's my take on the musical side of this album. Now let's get to what is undisputably the worst part of this album. The fucking lyrics. Oh my god, these lyrics. You can tell just by watching the video that Doug thought he wrote some really clever shit. Like, this is some next-level satire in his mind. When, in fact, the opposite is true. These are some of the cringiest attempts at parody I have ever heard. So, by all accounts, Doug Walker claims that he not only likes Pink Floyd, but also The Wall. Because I want it to be experimental like the film was, because I really liked the film. And to some degree, I do believe him because... You would not put all of this effort into making this hot piece of garbage if you truly did not like it on some level. Cue all of the videos I've done on James Rolfe. But Doug's attempts to pick apart this movie as some kind of try-hard, overdramatic Oscar bait is just so out of touch. So long, Oscar bait song. Smoke a bong and it will feel less wrong. He makes fun of how there are too many slow, boring songs back to back. Um, It's called Building a Mood, Subtlety. In his take on Another Brick in the Wall Part 2, which he labeled We Need More Victimization, some shit like that, he's literally going on talking about We Need More Victimization. We Need More Stuff to Rebel. Though our education system's broke, this is... Oh, this was the worst. This is pandering like hell. No more education systems, bro. Wait, maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. I got a high school education. <laughs> this is pandering like hell. That line, oh God, that made me cringe so hard. Like, <laughs> And then he goes on, hey, who cares? All this bitching sells. He's making Pink Floyd out to be at, like some kind of a pop star of that time that was just some kind of like two-dimensional uh, like commodity that was, was trying to... The whole reason why Roger Waters put all this considerable time and effort into this project was to merely sell records and make money. Um, and it's it's just so like... I've seen his videos... Nostalgia Critic, he's done videos where he's done very in-depth, like, witty or insightful takes on, on, on certain movies that are bad or whatever. But, like, how can you show that level of intelligence on all these other projects? But when it comes to The Wall, uh, which is pretty obvious, like, what it's about, how can you be that misguided and how can you miss the mark that much? Then he goes on to talking about, like, LOL, so school sucks, grow a damn pair of balls. Now... Part of me wonders, like, how much of this is just him trying to, uh, I have to make these words fit into this melody and this rhyme scheme that's already been established. So, like, uh, I'm maybe he made choices that he wouldn't have ultimately loved to have made, but, like, I need, you know, something to fit into this, like, the, the scheme of these lyrics. But then another part of me is like, well, no, he's just literally trying to, like, take the piss out of this, like, song and album. I mean, just... The whole rest of the song just goes on to basically insinuate that this whole thing is inauthentic and farcical and some kind of attempt to be overly angsty to win over teenagers, talking about how, like, school sucks, which, by the the way, I mean, like, that's not, like, 
That's like ragging on someone for writing a love song. It's like, yeah, people not liking being in school is a, is a song topic that has been talked about like sorry that was stammering drunk josh of last night this is editing bay slightly hungover sober josh i think what i was trying to say was it's common to talk about how school sucks it's not like a, a faux pas or something just like talking about like writing a love song isn't a faux pas it's like yeah these, these are human common experiences that we all share so why is it all of a sudden pandering when Pink Floyd does it. Okay, back to slightly drunk stammering Josh. Anyway, it's not even about that. None of the things that he says in the lyrics of this song are true regarding the original song. It's not pandering. It fits perfectly into the plot line of one of the first ways that the character that Pink starts to feel alienated as a child and starts to build the wall around his emotions. It happened to be a catchy song, so it was played on the radio. So yeah, I guess if you were a normie dumbass who hasn't heard the full context of the album, you might say to yourself, wow, this is a kind of a silly little song talking about how school sucks. Ooh, what a novel concept. Alice Cooper's already done that song. But that's not the context of this song at all. Doug Walker has said in interviews he's seen the movie, but have you though because these are pretty salient plot points that are kind of hard to misinterpret the rest of the lyrics on this album just kind of piss you off you're listening to this hack attempt this witty satire that's supposed to take the piss on a cult classic i'm sorry doug you made demo reel and pop quiz hot shots You are literally the last person on this earth who is qualified to say anything critical of pink floyd's the wall Also, just listening to this album by itself, the lyrics are hard to decipher in a lot of areas, especially seeing as Doug is trying to cram as many witty quips as he can inside these Pink Floyd melodies that were already written. And as a result of this, most of his genius satire on the album alone, not talking about the video, it's inaudible. What a shame. Also, the track listing is all fucked up because they only remade half of the wall, so they've built this narrative only using half of the material, and the track listings aren't even congruent with, like, say, disc one. It's just like a wall greatest hits if you were to eliminate the songs that kind of are more ambient or quieter or whatever. And then, of course, because Doug Walker is Doug Walker... And by that, I mean, on the inside, I feel like he identifies as a 16-year-old girl. The last song on this album is uh, Slipknot's Corey Taylor singing the SpongeBob SquarePants theme song, the most popular song on this entire record. Now, if you've clicked on this video, I'm sure you've seen the god-awful video, and you're aware that Corey Taylor and his son Griffin are all up in it. Apparently, they're huge Nostalgia Critic fans. Even still, I don't know why Corey would have agreed to do this project as someone who is in the music industry and someone who would surely know how many Pink Floyd fans this would ultimately piss off. But I would say, at the end of the day, the backsplashes of piss rightfully landed on Doug Walker. A bunch of videos have been made, as I said before, criticizing this video and album, and I just wanted to throw in my two cents as well, because when I first watched this video, I couldn't believe what a shit take he had on this movie. And again, Doug, you made demo reel. Anyway, that's about every single last thing I have to say about Doug Walker and his his shitty wall reimagining. Instead of asking, uh what do you think of this album i'm going to ask let me know if you actually liked it like let me know if you actually thought it was funny in any way that's what i'm really interested in hearing about anyway until next time have a good rest of your night hey you guys like the music in this review well believe it or not there's an album of it i'm not even kidding this was done by rob scallon who appears in the review he has his own youtube channel he's just this incredible talent and i really think he outdid himself with this because this is just such a love letter to pink floyd's music this is just such a love letter to pink floyd's music